Emperor Manik II GCB, GCMG, baptized as Salamayam, was Negus of Shewa, then Negu so Nagus of Ethiopia from 1889 to his death. At the height of his internal power and external prestige, the process of territorial expansion and creation of the modern empire state had been completed by 1898, thus restoring the ancient Ethiopian kingdom to its glory of the Aksumite Empire which was one of the four most powerful kingdoms of the ancient world. Ethiopia was transformed under Negus or Nagast Menelik. The major signposts of modernization were put in place. Externally, his victory over the Italian invaders had earned him great fame. Following ADWA, recognition of Ethiopia's independence by external powers was expressed in terms of diplomatic representation at the court of Menelik and delineation of Ethiopia's boundaries with the adjacent colonies. Manalik expanded his kingdom to the south and east, expanding into Kaffa, Sidamar, Wolata and other kingdoms. He is widely called Emir Manalik in Ethiopia for his forgiving nature and his selfless deeds to the poor. Biography Abeto Menelik was born in Angolala, near Deborah Buran, Shewa. He was the son of Negus Haile Melikot of Shewa and Woizero Ijigayehu. Woizero Ijigayehu was a lady in the household of Haile Melikot's grandmother, the formidable Woizero Zeniburk, widow of Merit Asmach Wasin Sigurd, and mother of King Salis Selassie of Shewa. Prior to his death in 1855, Negus Haile Melikot named Menelik a successor to the throne of Shewa. Shortly after Haile Melikot died, Menelik was taken prisoner by Nagusa Nagus Tuadros II. Following Nagusa Nagus Tuadros II's conquest of Shewa, he had young Salamayam transferred to his mountain stronghold of Magdala. Still, Tuadros treated the young prince well. He even offered him the hand of his daughter Altash Tuadros in marriage, which Menelik accepted. Upon Menelik's imprisonment, his uncle, Haile Mikhail, was appointed as Shum of Shewa by Negusa Nagus Tuadros II with the title of Meridasmish. However, Merid Asmish Haile Mikhail rebelled against Tuadros, resulting in his being replaced by the non-royal Atto Bezabur as Shum. However, Atto Bezabur in turn then rebelled against the emperor and proclaimed himself Negus of Shewa. Although the Shuin royals imprisoned at Magdala had been largely complacent as long as a member of their family ruled over Shewa. This usurpation by a commoner was not palatable to them. They plotted the escape of Menelik from Magdala, with the help of Muhammad Ali and Queen Wurkitu of Wallo. He escaped from Magdala the night of 1 July 1865, abandoning his wife, and returned to Shoa. Enraged, Emperor Tuadros slaughtered 29 Oromo hostages then had 12 Amhara notables beaten to death with bamboo rods. King of Shewi Bezabur's attempt to raise an army against Menelik failed miserably. Thousands of Shuins rallied to the flag of the son of Negus Haile. Melikot and even Bezabur's own soldiers deserted him for the returning prince. Abeto Menelik entered Ankoba and proclaimed himself Negus. While Negus Menelik reclaimed his ancestral Shuin crown, he also laid claim to the imperial throne. As a direct descendant male line of Nagusa Nagus Lebna Dengel. However, he made no overt attempt to assert this claim during this time. Marcus interprets his lack of decisive action not only to Menelik's lack of confidence and experience, but that he was emotionally incapable of helping to destroy the man who had treated him as a son, not wishing to take part in the 1868 expedition to Abyssinia. He allowed his rival Kassai to benefit with gifts of modern weapons and supplies from the British. Afterwards other challenges, a revolt amongst the Wallow to the north, the intrigues of his next wife Bafana to replace him with her choice of ruler, military failures against the ARSI Romo to the southeast, kept Menelik from directly confronting Kassai until after his rival had brought in Abuna. 
from Egypt who crowned him Neguso Nagus Johannes IV. Submission to Johannes eventually, Menelik acquiesced to the superior position of Johannes and, on 20 March 1878, Menelik approached Johannes on foot. He was carrying a rock on his neck and his face was down in the traditional form of submission. However, very aware of how precarious his own position was, Johannes recognized Menelik as Negus of Shelwa and gave him numerous presents which included four cannons, several hundred modern Remington rifles, and ammunition for both. Succession On 10 March 1889, Emperor Johannes was killed in a war with Mardi Sudan during the Battle of Galibut. With his dying breaths, Johannes declared his natural son, de Jasmish Mengesha Johannes, as his heir. On 25 March, upon hearing of the death of Johannes, Negus Menelik immediately proclaimed himself as Negusso Nagist. The succession now lay between Mengesha Johannes of Tigre and Menelik of Shoa. Menelik argued that while the family of Johannes IV claimed descent from King Solomon and the Queen of Sheba through females of the dynasty, his own claim was based on an interrupted direct male lineage which made the claims of the House of Shewa equal to those of the Elder Gonda line of the dynasty. In the end, Menelik was able to obtain the allegiance of a large majority of the Ethiopian nobility. On 3 November 1889, Menelik was consecrated and crowned as Negu Sonagis before a glittering crowd of dignitaries and clergy. He was crowned by Abuna Matawas, Bishop of Shewa, at the Church of Mary on Mount Hentito. The newly consecrated and crowned Negu Sonagis Menelik too quickly toured the north in force. He received the submission of the local officials in Luster, Yeju, Gojam, Wello, and Begemda. Menlik, and later his daughter Zardichu, would be the last Ethiopian monarchs who could claim uninterrupted direct male descent from King Solomon and the Queen of Sheba. His reign as emperor in April 1889, while claiming the throne against Mengesha Johannes, Menelik reached at Wu Chalet in Wallo province a treaty with Italy, ceding the northern province of Eritrea to Italy. Most of the highland area of this province was a part of Abyssinian kingdoms for hundreds of years under the title of Medribara, consisting of the districts of Hamasian, Aquila Guzai, and Sere. It was also referred to as Merib Melish, meaning the land beyond the river. The river was the boundary that separated the two northern Abyssinian provinces, Medribara and Tigre. Upon the treaty with Italy, Emperor Menelik II in 1889 stated, The territories north of Merib Melish not belong neither are under my rule. I am the emperor of Abyssinia. The land is populated by a few indicated, they are Adels, Bekas, Egyptians and Turkish. Abyssinia defend its territories, but do not fight for foreign lands that are to my knowledge. Menelik signed the Treaty of Wu Chalet with the Italians on May 2, 1889. Controversy soon emerged on the interpretation of Article 17 of the treaty. While the Amharic text reads that Menelik could, if he wished, call upon the services of the Italian authorities in his communications with other powers, the Italian version made this obligatory, thereby making Ethiopia in effect a protectorate of Italy. Emperor Menelik denounced it and demanded that the Italian version be changed. Negotiations failed, so Menelik renounced the treaty, leading Italy to declare war and invade from Eritrea. After defeating the Italians at Amberalaji in Mekul, Menelik inflicted an even greater defeat on them at ADWAA on 1 March 1896, forcing them to capitulate. Afterwards, Menelik returned to Addis Ababa leaving Eritrea as a protectorate of Italy. Menelik is believed to have said, leave the Italians to rule North Eritrea beyond Merib River. A treaty was signed at Addis Ababa recognizing the absolute sovereign independence of Ethiopia.
In addition, he signed the treaty which recognized Eritrea as a sovereign state of Italy and negotiated that the Merib River is the common border between Eritrea and Ethiopia. Menelik II can be named as father for modern Ethiopia. He was a Russophile because he thought only Russia could be the main ally of his policy of expansion of Ethiopia by reason of necessity to counteract the British colonial expansion. Starting with the war against the British, during the visit of a Russian diplomatic and military mission in 1893, Menelik II concluded a strong alliance with that country. As a result of that alliance, from 1893 to 1913, Russia sponsored the visits of thousands of advisers and volunteers to Ethiopia. Two friendships that evolved from these visits were friendships between Menelik II and Alexander Bulatovich and also between Menelik II and Nikolai Gumeli of the Great Poet. Menelik had in 1898 crushed a rebellion by Ras Mengesha Johannes. He directed his efforts thenceforth to the consolidation of his authority, and in a certain degree, to the opening up of his country to Western civilization. Menelik's clemency to Rasmong Ashar, whom he compelled to submit and then made hereditary prince of his native Tigray, was ill repaid by a long series of revolts by that prince. Menelik focused much of his energy on development and modernization of his country after this threat to his throne was firmly ended. He had granted in 1894 a concession for the building of a railway to his capital from the French port of Djibouti but, alarmed by a claim made by France in 1902 to the control of the line in Ethiopian territory, he stopped for four years the extension of the railway beyond Diadawa, when in 1906 France, the United Kingdom and Italy came to an agreement on the subject, granting control to a joint venture corporation. Menelik officially reiterated his full sovereign rights over the whole of his empire. Under his reign, beginning in the 1880s, Menelik set off from the central province of Sho to subjugate and incorporate the lands and people of the south, east and west into an empire. During his battles, he made tactical alliance with different ethnic groups and appointed Hataji or Justin Agda as Minister of Defense, who was of mixed Gurujaromo ancestry. The people incorporated by Menelik were the people the unarmed southerners, Oromo, Sidamar, Gurridge, Wolata and other groups. He began expanding his kingdom to the south and east, expanding into areas that had never been under his rule. But some of the new lands incorporated are claimed to have been under the Aksum Empire before the fall of the Aksumite Kingdom. Menelik II had a Romo ancestry himself on his mother's side, and also his late father King Haile Melikot's alliance with the Wallowa Romo helped him militarily. He achieved most of his conquests with the help of Raskobinas Shuanoromus, who helped Melik previously during his clashes with Gojam. During the conquest of the southern territories, Menelik's army carried out atrocities against civilians and combatants including mutilation, mass killings and large-scale slavery. Some estimates for the number of people killed as a result of the conquest go into the millions. Large-scale atrocities were also committed against the Titsi people and the people of the Kafecho kingdom. The details and discussions of this particular period in Ethiopian history are heavily politicized, and the views of the facts vary depending on the ethno-political agenda of the sides. Developments during Menelik's reign Menelik II was fascinated by modernity, and like Duadros II before him, had a keen ambition to introduce Western technological and administrative advances into Ethiopia. The Russian support for Ethiopia led to the advent of a Russian Red Cross mission. The Russian mission was a military mission conceived as medical support for the Ethiopian troops. It arrived in Addis Ababa some three months after Manilik's ADWA victory, and then the first hospital was created in Ethiopia. Following the rush by the major powers to establish diplomatic relations following the Ethiopian victory at ADWA, more and more Westerners began to travel to Ethiopia looking for trade, farming, hunting and mineral exploration concessions. 
Manalik II founded the first modern bank in Ethiopia, the Bank of Abyssinia, introduced the first modern postal system, signed the agreement and initiated work that established the Addis Ababa Djibouti Railway with the French, introduced electricity to Addis Ababa, as well as the telephone, telegraph, the motorcar and modern plumbing. He attempted unsuccessfully to introduce coinage to replace the Maria Theresa Thaler. According to one persistent tale, Menelik heard about the modern method of executing criminals using electric chairs during the 1890s, and ordered three for his kingdom. When the chairs arrived, Menelik learnt they would not work, as Ethiopia did not yet have an electric power industry. Rather than waste his investment, Menelik used one of the chairs as his throne, sending another to his second abate Bar Yalu. Recent research, however, has cast significant doubt on this story, and suggested it was invented by a Canadian journalist during the 1930s. During a particularly devastating famine caused by Rinderpiss early in his reign, Menelik personally went out with a handheld hoe to furrow the fields to show that there was no shame in ploughing fields by hand without oxen, something Ethiopian highlanders had been too proud to consider previously. He also forgave taxes during this particularly severe famine. Later in his reign, Menelik established the first cabinet of ministers to help in the administration of the empire, appointing trusted and widely respected nobles and retainers to the first ministries. These ministers would remain in place long after his death, serving in their posts through the brief reign of Elijah Yasu and into the reign of Empress Zardichu. They played a key role in deposing Elijah Oyasu. Private life and death In 1864, Menelik married Altash to Ardros, whom he divorced in 1865. The marriage produced no children. In 1865, he married Bifana Gachu, whom he divorced in 1882. The marriage produced no children. Finally, in 1883, he married Tachi Betul, who remained his wife until his death. From 1906, for all intents and purposes, Tachi Betel ruled in Menelik's stead during his infirmity. Menelik II and Tachi Betel personally owned 70,000 slaves. Woizero Altash Chuadros was a daughter of Emperor Chuadros II and the first wife of Menelik II. She and Menelik were married during the time that Menelik was held captive by Chuadros. The marriage ended when Menelik escaped captivity abandoning her. She was subsequently remarried to the jazz match Barry Avpaulus of ADWA. Woizero Bafina Wald Michael was married to Menelik for 17 years from 1865 to 1882. Her brother was the jazz match Twenda Bile Wald Michael. Woizero Bafina was implicated in a plot to overthrow Menelik when he was king of Shoah. She was widely suspected of being secretly in touch with Emperor Johannes IV in her ambition to replace her husband on the Shuan throne with one of her sons from a previous marriage. With the failure of her plot, Woizero Bafina was separated from Menelik, but Menelik apparently was still deeply attached to her. An attempt at reconciliation failed, but when his relatives and courtiers suggested new young wives to the king, he would sadly say, You ask me to look at these women with the same eyes that once gazed upon Bafina, paying tribute both to his ex-wife's great beauty and his own continuing attachment to her. Empress Taichi Betul was a noblewoman of imperial blood and a member of one of the leading families of the regions of Semyon, Yeju in modern Wallow, and Begemda. Her paternal uncle, the jazz match WUBE Haile Mayim of Semyon, had been the ruler of Tigray and much of northern Ethiopia. She had been married four times previously and exercised considerable influence. Tachu and Menelik were married in a full communion church service and thus fully canonical and insoluble, which Menelik had not had with either of his previous wives. Menelik and Tachu would have no children. Empress Tachu would become Empress Consort upon her husband's succession, and would become the most powerful consort of an Ethiopian monarch since Empress Menchweb. 
Previous to his marriage to Taichi Betul, Menelik fathered several natural children. Three natural children that Menelik recognized were Woizero Shoeregamenelik, born 1867, Woizero Zardichu Menelik, born 1876, and Abeto Asfa Wasson Menelik, born 1873. In 1886, Menelik married 10 year old Zardichu to Rasaria Johannes, the 15 year old son of Emperor Johannes IV. In May 1888, Rasaria Selassie died. Woizero Shoerega was first married to Dejaz Mach Wodaho Gobina, the son of Ras Gobina Dachi. They would have a son, Abeto Wasin Sigid Wodaho, but this grandson of Menelik II was eliminated from the succession due to dwarfism. In 1892, 25-year-old Woizero Shoerega was married for a second time to 42-year-old Ras Mikhail of Wallo. They had two children, a daughter Woizero Zeniburk, and Menelik's eventual successor, Lij Oyasu. Woizero Zeniburk Mikhail would eventually marry at age 12, the much older Ras Bezabitekel Haymanot of Gojam, and died in childbirth a year later. Abeto Asfa Wasson Menelik died when he was about 15 years old. Only Shoagerad has present-day descendants. Rumored natural children of the emperor include Rasbiru Wald Gabriel and Dejazmish Kebad Tesema. The latter, in turn, was possibly the natural grandfather of Colonel Mengistru Haile Mariam, the communist leader of the Derg, who eventually deposed the monarchy and assumed power in Ethiopia from 1974 to 1991. On 27 October 1909, Menelik II suffered a massive stroke and his mind and spirit died. After that, Menelik was no longer able to reign, and the office was taken over by Empress Teichu, as de facto ruler, until Raspitwadad Tesma was publicly appointed regent. However, he died within a year, and a council of regency, from which the empress was excluded, was formed in March 1910. In the early morning hours of 12 December 1913, Nagusa Nagist Menelik II died. He was buried quickly without announcement or ceremony at the Sealbeck Hidan Meherit Church on the grounds of the Imperial Palace. In 1916 Menelik II was reburied in the specially built church at Baratala Mariam Monastery of Addis Ababa. Succession After the death of Menelik II, the Council of Regency continued to rule Ethiopia. As described above, Lij Ayasu had been designated successor of Menelik II by Empress Teichu in May 1909. However, Lij Ayasu was never crowned Emperor of Ethiopia, and eventually Empress Zudachui succeeded Menelik II on 27 September 1916. She was his oldest daughter.